villages. We know them. We love them. We pillage them. We are all pretty familiar with the average Minecraft village. You know the drill. You find a village, steal all you can, and exploit the villagers by putting them in farms. But how does a village function without player intervention? Today, we will explore the socio-economics of a Minecraft village. We will see how they function independently, if their economy is any good, and if we can apply it to a real-life village. And before we start, I just want to put a small disclaimer here. I am in no way an expert in economics. This video is just for fun. Please don't take it too seriously. In order to analyze a village, we will look at everything we know about them. Geographic and resource dependency. First of all, we know that a village can spawn in several biomes. More precisely, plains, savanna, taiga, meadows, snowy plains, and desert biomes. That tells us that some villages have an advantage over others in terms of location, or we could say they have a comparative advantage. Minecraft villages depend on resources available within their immediate surroundings. For example, plains villages have more fertile land for farming, while desert villages have limited arable land, thus having fewer food resources. Also, in all villages, there is no mining activity or underground resource exploitation, meaning villages lack access to materials like iron or diamond, except for the ones that are already in the chest when the village spawns. But the quantity is extremely insufficient. This, on the other hand, limits capital formation and industrial activity. The lack of trade with other villages and the fact that most villages are isolated makes them autarkic. This creates a hyper-localized economy where all goods are produced and consumed in the village, which creates economic stagnation because there is no inflow of new goods, ideas, or technologies. Population and Labor Dynamics In terms of population and labor dynamics, we know that there are no elders and little to no children. Villager population growth depends on the number of available beds and food. This means that their demographic expansion is directly tied to economic output. Every villager is of working age and everyone is assigned a specific job. This ensures 100% employment, except nitwits in some cases. However, villagers cannot switch professions once they are assigned one. Villagers that produce food, like farmers, fishermen, and butchers, focus solely on producing food, while other villagers, like toolsmiths, armorers, librarians, and others, rely on trading with the player in order to contribute to the village economy. This specialization creates a basic division of labor. But since villagers can't adapt to other roles and there is no player in this scenario, all these villagers that rely on the player for trading and contribution become basically useless to the village economy. And since the village relies on its 100% employment way of living, there are no unemployment mechanisms. This opens a big problem in the village economy and its self-reliant model. Production and Productivity We know that villages mainly produce food, so they operate as agrarian economies, where farming is the cornerstone of their production. Farmers manually plant and harvest crops without using tools. This severely limits their productivity. Other professions like toolsmiths or weaponsmiths can trade goods only with players, but other than that, they cannot create or use advanced tools. This creates a precedent for a static production system that resembles a pre-industrial agricultural society, relying only on manual labor and localized resources. The small population and lack of advanced tools mean that villages cannot scale and achieve any kind of mechanization, like automatic farms. Another obstacle is that villagers can work only during daylight hours, which limits their economy and productivity by making them reliant on natural daylight cycles. Trade and Barter System Another significant thing that villagers have is emeralds. A lot of people say that emeralds serve as a monetary system in the village economy. But in my unprofessional opinion, Emeralds are not a monetary system as much as a barter-like system where they act as a pseudo-currency. Emeralds have no use in the economy beyond trading. If the player is not involved in the economy, villagers cannot level up, limiting their trades to basic low-value items. This prevents access to better tools or economic progression. 
Villagers only trade with specific job-related things. For example, farmers offer food products and librarians offer enchanted items. These fixed patterns of trade are called static trade relationships. And since there is little to no interaction between villagers beyond trading or breeding, there is a lack of economic fluidity. When villagers rely on each other to a small extent, this is called limited interdependency. Economic growth and innovation. We know that villages do not improve over time but stay the same. This means that they exist in a steady state called equilibrium. Since there are no new tools, innovations, or trade relations with other villages, that means their economy is static and unchanging. If there is no player to trade, give resources, or expand the village, the economy remains stagnant. Villagers do not have the ability to develop new technologies or improve their production methods. Villagers act based on fixed behavior, preventing experimentation and innovation. This means that a Minecraft village is frozen in time. For example, no matter how much time passes, a toolsmith and a weaponsmith will never create new tools. Resource scarcity and risk. Villagers do not store resources such as food. They have their inventories where they keep food for breeding, or they put it in chests for redistribution, but they never seem to store a surplus of their resources. Or at least what we find in the chests is not nearly enough to sustain a whole village. I want to insert a quick note here. While writing the script, I completely forgot about the stacked hay bale blocks in villages. I guess this counts as storing a surplus. But still it is too exposed to threats and can easily be destroyed or stolen. In case of a threat, this can quickly lead to scarcity. Although there is an iron golem in each village, the pillagers need to destroy only a small amount of the infrastructure of the village in order to cause a lot of damage to the economy. Pillager attacks are a major threat. They mainly spawn when a player is in the village with the bad omen status. But if a pillager post is close enough to a village, they can send out little patrols that can destroy crops by trampling on them and significantly lower the population of the village, thus reducing the labor force and further stalling the economy. Welfare and Distribution There is no class division between villagers. Every villager contributes equally within their role. This is called an egalitarian economy. There is no wealth or poverty. All resources are directly shared or traded, which ensures food and shelter for everyone. But that leads to a problem. There is no governance or planning to redistribute resources in case of shortages or emergencies, leaving the economy entirely dependent on individual effort. Social and Behavioral Dynamics We know the behavior of the villagers. They perform their assigned roles without hesitation. And while this makes the economy stable and predictable, it also means that there is a lack of adaptability and ambition. And since villagers cannot change professions, this leads to a class structure based on job roles. The inability to level up without a player further restricts their potential, as villagers remain locked at a basic level of productivity and trade. Real-life comparison if we were to find the closest real-life alternative to Minecraft village economics, we can look at a small medieval European village during the 10th to 15th century. Most of the small villages during that time were mostly isolated, relying on local markets. There were lords, but they provided minimal to no governance. They really just taxed people and did nothing. The medieval villages were also shaped by natural geography and resources. Really, the only difference is that the medieval villages had trade from time to time. And this is it. A short economic analysis of the average Minecraft village. I think I covered everything. If I missed something, let me know in the comments. Bye.